And I guess with this particle, this is probably a good place to introduce a new conservation laws that, um, that um, I haven't mentioned that at all because it, um, <laughs> there was no chance for this to come up, but this is a good place to mention um, two or three, three new conservation laws. So two of them are exact conservation laws. Those two exact conservation laws are the conservation of what's called baryon number. And I'll explain that. Um, and the second one is similar to this one. It's conservation of lepton number. And the last one is only on, uh, it's only on approximate conservation, but let me just uh, write it down anyway, um, as it's an idea that exists. It's a conservation of what's called, um, so I think I mentioned this, physics is to become more creative in naming things. Uh, baryons and lepton, those are not all that creative. I'll explain why they're not all that creative. This one is, um, it's a conservation of something called the flavor. And I just have to tell you, it has nothing to do with the flavor, it's like, how are you going to taste the neutrino? But um, it's, this particular property has been named flavor by the uh, whimsical particle physicists. Um, so I guess, how many, uh, how many here know Greek? <laughs> so these numbers of baryon and lepton, they come from Greek, the etymology is Greek, and what baryon means is a heavy particle. The on is the ending for particles, Barus is, I think, like weight or like heavy, whatever. And lepton, I don't know the actual root, root word, but it's the light particle. And of these particles you know, you know the difference between protons and electrons, right? Proton has mass of approximately, proton has mass of about one GeV per C squared, and electron has a mass of approximately 0 0.5 MeV. Let me use MeV. So proton has a mass of approximately 1,000 MeV per C squared. Electron has a mass of approximately 0 0.5 MeV per C squared. So you see the pretty big gap between these. And in fact, the proton and neutron has a pretty similar mass. Not the same, because if they were the same, this wouldn't be possible. So neutron is a little bit heavier but they have similar mass. So the initial classification that people came up with is that they were calling these as the heavy particles or baryons. And they called electron a uh, light particle or a lepton. So with the idea of these two conservation laws, Let's come back and look at this here. When you look at this interaction or this diagram, is the baryon number conserved, right? One baryon came in, one baryon went out. Is the lepton number conserved? Not really, right? I had a zero lepton come in. Before neutrino, I had one lepton going out, which is troublesome enough. Even with a neutrino, it looks like I have two neutrinos, two leptons. So neutrino is a nearly massless or a light particle. So let's say neutrinos are also leptons. But that doesn't really fix my issue. I have an electron going out and I have a neutrino going out. So this is an anti-neutrino. Um, how many here are familiar with the concept of antiparticles? Not enough of you. So let me just draw the diagram for anti-neutrino and I will do a little detour of discussion of antiparticles. Um, so these are the symbols we use to indicate antiparticles. It's uh, uh, for the particle, the typical way to indicate it's an antiparticle, we put a bar over it. Um, so that means it's anti-neutrino. <laughs> um, so this is, anti -neutrino. and in Feynman diagram, we already indicate passage of time from left to right, right? Which means these arrows are actually redundant if all you are trying to say is that that's the direction that the particle is going. So really what these arrows are used for is to indicate, is it a particle or antiparticle? 
So with the neutrino, it'll be drawn this way. So antiparticle coming into the vertex. So you have a plus one lepton number going up, you, and you have minus one lepton number going up for a total of, so total, oops, I'm not <coughs> spelling total right, for the total lepton number of zero. Yeah? 